Cool. Um, hands up if you got out of bed in the morning and found yourself breathing. 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 Like. <laughs> right. So most of your hands work. That's good. Uh, what's twelve times twenty-three? Right, so your brain start working as well, great. <laughs> Take a mindful breath, find your pulse. Take a deep breath. Good. So now that we're present. <laughs> Can I just check the room? Um, who, who in here is a coach? Who's got some form of positive psychology training or certification or substantial knowledge? <laughs> I've been here for a few days, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, excellent. Who would call themselves a positive psychology coach? A confident hand up and a little less confident hand up. <laughs> Good, I'm, I'm going to talk about positive psychology coaching because the relationship status of this is complicated. Um, I'm going to try to pack these 15-20 minutes full of some metaphors. I did not bring any slides but this one and another one because I figured most of you have been here for four days, some for six, and you've been here all day. So uh, coaching is a relationship. We learn best from a relationship to people. And I saw this room and I'm like, I found myself there and looking up. And what we really learn from is this. So that's my, that's my goal for today is to deliver one message and to make it as entertaining as possible in that run-up. Um, take a moment and find a picture of white canvas. Now create a mental image, try to visualize what you think about positive psychology coaching. So if you could find an image that would, uh, that would resemble positive psychology coaching for you. I'm going to come back to that and see if uh, there's any shift going on. Because uh, I'm a deep thinker, a uh, bit of a philosopher. I like challenging people to think more deeply about things. Um, that's part of what I do at the University of East London. That's part of what I do generally, which does sometimes make me pretty annoying dinner guest. But uh, I, I really like that. 15-20 um, minutes, I don't want to overload you with details. So I'm going to deliver that message and see what is that one point that we can take home from positive psychology coaching? Because something I found is that you don't really take home a lot more than one or two points from a 20 minute speech. I'm fear familiar and optimism is my top fear strength. Uh, my other Gallup strength is adaptability, so I'm, uh, I'm adapting to this room because uh, I'm looking out to you all. <laughs> Appreciate you. Um, I'm also quite curious and um, I'm interested in the practical applications of this theory. Um, there's a ton of potential in positive psychology uh, in the applied arm of the coaching room. And I know there's tons of people out there doing positive psychology coaching, using positive psychology in the coaching room, but also in, in lots of other areas. But in, as, in the, as academics, we don't really know what positive psychology coaching is. They're baby sciences both coaching psychology and positive psychology. Uh, psychology itself has only been around for 150 years or so. Mathematics, biology, physics, that goes way back. We've been around since 1999. Some of the, the research we're drawing on is a little bit earlier than that, but we've really just tried to gather empirical evidence for the last 20 years, which is not a lot. So, my other interest is why this is relevant to me is because I'm teaching at the University of East London and we recently combined coaching psychology masters and the positive psychology masters. So now it's an FCP. And, but this is a master in applied positive psychology and coaching psychology. And what we're working towards is a master in positive psychology coaching. We want to integrate these two. But we're not quite there yet, I think, academically. That's why we can't call it a master in positive psychology coaching. So this is what we're trying to figure out. How can we create that thing? Coaching psychology is really difficult to research in itself because what are we really measuring? Are we measuring the intervention, the questions that somebody asks? Are, are, are we measuring the process that we're using? Or are we measuring the relationship that a practitioner has with a client? Because if you give 10 coaches the same 10 questions and you get them into a room with 100 clients each, 
all the results will be completely different. Because the relationship is different. Even the relationship with the same client on a different day is going to be different. And if you get the same words, you ask people, what do you mean? They can say it in a hundred different ways. Sometimes I do this little game that I, I give people uh, a little scrap pieces of paper with an emotion on it. And then you have to say the same words and people have to guess the emotion. So, studying coaching is really difficult. Positive psychology, I mean, some people have talked about a replication crisis. There's a lot of research out there. There's arguably a lot of bad research out there. There's a lot of people who come into programs like this and they have studied fine arts three decades ago and then they have worked in a job and now they're writing a dissertation. So, and there's a lot of research out there, but it's nice to be published. And there's a lot of journals who want people to publish. So, there's issues in research in both areas. So, trying to bring them together is a process. And that's what I want to talk about today. So, my main questions are what is positive psychology coaching? How can it be meaningfully integrated? How can these two branches of study be meaningfully integrated? And what's out there already? And I'm happy to say that I won't be able to answer any of those questions <laughs> satisfactorily. But the questions sometimes are much more important than the answers. And everybody who's had a coach or who is a coach will know that. So let's start at the beginning. When two people love each other very much, and they're biologically fit to produce offspring, and they're reasonably healthy in their relationship, and they're willing to give up everything for about 18 years, then <laughs> um, they create something. A relationship is formed, and a beautiful process starts. So something starts growing, which is equal parts that biological parents combined wisdom of decades of experience, a perfect, flawless integration of complementary strengths. Well, I'm just kidding. It's a very messy, very complex process of growth. And um, the first couple of years, they basically just cry and vomit all over you. And so it's difficult to grow something like that. Now, some couples arguably produce offspring that go and change the world in more meaningful ways than others. Some of these offspring grow up to be well-balanced, very well-educated, they have the space to reflect, to grow, to challenge, and they go to literally change the world. Some, not so much. Some people spend their lives doing other things and you know, enjoying themselves, some people go out there and they really make a difference and change the course of the world forever. So, that thing that positive psychology coaching can become, well balanced, their own identity, strong, powerful, awake, present, I think we're very far away from that. I think positive psychology and coaching psychology, I hear people talk about a marriage. Maybe coaches talk about a marriage, I hear students talk about a marriage, I hear some of my academic colleagues talking about a marriage. I think they've just started dating. I think they're very attractive, very popular, high potential. They're perfect match. They're very excited about each other, and they're fucking like rabbits. <laughs> There's people out there, new uh, approaches to positive psychology coaching, I see everywhere, positive psychology coaches pop up. I see so many people that say, I'm a positive psychology coach, this is what you were talking about as well. Well, what makes you a positive psychology coach? Well, arguably if you coach and you practice with positive psychology. But what does it actually mean? What, what are you actually basing that on? Um, our MAP program is growing in numbers tremendously. Uh, some years it's 50%, sometimes it's 30%, but I've started with 30 students in my, in my coaching module, and next year it's supposed to be over 200. So right now I have 120 distance learners. So everybody is learning about positive psychology in, in combination with coaching psychology. That master's is unique. I think there will be many others. Because I got out of the MAP program and thought, so what? What now? Two really good questions that we should ask ourselves about anything that we learn. So 
What now? I study coaching, but now people can study positive psychology and coaching together. So it, there's nothing inherently wrong with going out and experimenting. I certainly have done the same when I was that age, but I think positive psychology, coaching psychology, given that they're being in the mid to late stages of adolescence, I would say, we can't really talk about a marriage yet. And uh, it's good that we're experimenting, even in an age without contraception and um, intellectual condoms, if you like, we're producing offspring. And there's plenty of coaches out there who see through their teenage pregnancies and really give them a lot of love. And it doesn't mean that these kids can't go and change the world and really touch people. But imagine the potential if we, if we have offspring kids that, that are not raised by single parents, and some of those kids I see at the mall and I go on a very long holiday. Um, imagine the potential if those, uh, if those kids are raised not by a single parent, but by a community, by an extended family. You know, people who can really influence how they grow up, inspire, give knowledge, share the different perspectives. We send them to weekends and Uncle Marty's. Uh, an evening to, to Aunt Barb. Chess nights with Carol. Pizza Tuesdays with Clive. Catching a movie with Seth. Or playing cards with Alona and Sue. Maybe story time with Eben. Or Intensado with Amelia. There's a lot out there. After we send our kids to all of these play dates and activities, we send them to foosball. Afterwards they come back and good parents will sit them down and help them integrate what they've just experienced. Talk about it. See what have you made of what you just heard. Help kids challenge what they're hearing. You know, take the best bits from all these different people, disciplines, approaches. I've seen approaches out there who are really sound, but there's no research behind them whatsoever. I just know it works because it works with my clients. Would it also work with my clients? How could we test it, measure it? Is there something that we can take from this? We need to give kids a space to integrate. That's how you build something with integrity. And I really want this thing to grow up, that the thing that could be positive psychology coaching, the thing that will become that. I want that to be sound and based and grounded in, in solid ideas, concepts, theories, tested. I believe in the scientific method. I believe that we need to talk to each other, to communicate. Because this is how we build something that can literally change the world. And I get that coaches who are essentially entrepreneurs, they need a USB, a unique selling baby. <laughs> I get that. We are, we are also business people. We try to build something. There's very few coaches who have jobs with a regular income. We need to go out there and recruit clients. And how better than to say, I have something that nobody else has. You already have that, which is you. Niching is about, not just about what specific approach do you use or who do you specifically work with. It's also who you are as a person. And given that coaching is so relationship based, that's the strongest asset that you have. So what kind of process would make sense for you? Share your experiences with that process. You don't have to be scared that somebody is stealing your process because it's you who creates that process. A process without a relationship is not going to work. So let's share what works for you that's critically engaged with what we are doing. And then we can create something that has a lot of power because in, in the world today, I believe coaches can make a real difference. Because we have the incredible honor and great responsibility to be in a room, and I know quite a few of you will work with leaders in high position whose decisions will influence hundreds, sometimes thousands, sometimes millions of people. If you work with a mom or a dad, you have a huge that you have a huge potential to help somebody shape how they think, get to know themselves, what they want to do in life. You know, rather than having an agenda and saying you all need to change the world, we give people a space where people can think about who I am and what I want to do, who do I think is right and wrong. And we're facilitating that. So there's a real power in this. And given that so many coaches pop up everywhere, we, we need a, a solid approach, we need them to think more critically about what they are doing. I've seen a lot of coaches who are horrendous practices, 
You know, and they go in and they tell people what to do and they have an agenda and they don't really know what's going on for themselves so they ask questions in a very leading way, not even aware of that. And I've seen some of the coaching videos that I assess, I'm like, have, have you I read a book on coaching? And if so, which one? Because I really want that to be not called coaching. But arguably, it is coaching if you call it coaching, it's not regulated. So what I think we need is coaches to work more considerably. And if you aspire to be a positive psychology coach, go out and do it. But be considerate and start growing as a practitioner. Because we need those people. And it's not just people with three PhDs and five decades of research behind them. We need people who work with people. So if you are a positive psychology coach or you work with positive psychology, go share what works for you. You don't need two PhDs in order to contribute to this. I believe that we can bring this bottom up, we can create this bottom up. I don't want somebody to decide what positive psychology coaching is because they did a large study and had some funding and then everybody trying to copy that. I want this to come bottom up. I, I know there's people out there. We can't do this top down. We need to have coaches out there who say, I use positive psychology in this way, and this is my experience. It's not just if it worked, but <coughs> particularly if it didn't work at all. Because we learn from all of these experiences. I don't have to be written up and published in a, in a high, uh, high value uh, journal. We can share in many different ways. Technology is amazing. The internet is incredible. And there's lots of experiences. Write them up. It doesn't matter if you're an academic writer. Write them up. Say, this is the way I work. This is what inspired me from positive psychology. This is what worked or what didn't work in coaching. And this is what I've learned. You know, talk, talk to each other. So it's a very exciting time. I want that large family to raise this offspring. And uh, so talk to each other. Um, I'm currently editing a book for Routledge for positive psychology coaching and I had it pretty much ready and I decided that's not what I want to publish. What I want to do is add another 70% of this book and give voices to coaches who use positive psychology. Because I want people who are out there practicing to have a voice. I want people to describe what they're doing so that then researchers can come and work together with practitioners because not everybody is both. Look at what people have done and see, maybe I can measure this, maybe I can test this, maybe I can distill the elements that really worked well from this person and see if this other person could contribute to it. So I want you guys to come together. Um, I have a timeline of a year. If you do have something to say about positive psychology and coaching, do get in touch. I said I'm quite a big picture thinker, so um, I do have a lot of details. Uh, I recently put them uh, in a course. Uh, I'm offering this course for half price to anybody at the conference and the first five people who sign up get it for free. Um, I also have written half of that book up that I mentioned and uh, I'm giving it away for free as well because I do want this stuff to be out there. Um, I don't think anybody makes, like not anybody, very few people make money from science and it's really not the point of it. But what I want is coaches to go out there and to learn and to talk to each other. So talk to me, talk to each other here. You know, the conference is a brilliant place for that. Um, talk to each other online. Start following each other. Start putting your thoughts out there. Start writing that blog that you've been sitting on for years. You know? Or post something on Facebook. Even that, there's, there's followers there. You know, there's people out there. Face-to-face -face is my preferred method, but we should use the technology that we have at our fingertips in meaningful ways. Because this could be one of the greatest love stories of our lives. You know, these two people, concepts, approaches, branches of study, they go really well together. And if we nurture them well, then they can grow into something that can literally change the world. So thank you very much.